Life Audio. Hey friends, welcome to the Hearing Jesus for Kids podcast. Do you ever feel like you want to know more about the Bible, but that it's kind of hard to understand? Do you want to share your faith with your friends, but have a hard time figuring out how to do that? Do you want to learn how to connect the Bible to your real life? Well, then this is the show for you. My name is Rachel, and I'm your host. I've been a children's pastor for a long time, and one of my favorite things is helping kids learn how to understand the Bible. I think that sometimes people think that the Bible is just for adults, but God actually really wants kids to know about Him. So on this podcast, we're going to learn all about God's big story and how He shows Himself to us through the Bible. As we learn together what the Bible stories actually mean, we can learn how to live out our faith in our everyday life. Hey friends, welcome back to the Hearing Jesus for Kids podcast. I'm your host, Rachel. Today I want you to think about the last time you went on a trip or maybe even a vacation. Probably you went with your mom or dad or even your grandma or grandpa. When you left, were you the one that packed all the bags or was it somebody else? See, most times when kids go on vacation, they don't have to even worry about the laundry being clean or their flip-flops being in the bag. Instead, their mom or dad usually packs the bag. You don't really have to worry because those adults in your life, they know what you need. It's kind of like that with God, and that's what we're going to be learning about today in Matthew chapter 10. I'm going to go ahead and read, and we'll stop as we go. It says, go and announce to them that the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cheer those with leprosy, and cast out demons. Give as freely as you have received. So if you think back to what we've been studying over the last couple of weeks, we know that this is what Jesus had been doing. He had been going around from town to town and praying for people to be healed and delivered and It was amazing to see Jesus do these things, but now it was the disciples' turn. See, God wants people to be free, to be healed. And part of our job as disciples, as his followers, is to pray for them to be healed and delivered. And you may be thinking, there is no way I can do that. And you want to know a secret? You're right. You can't. Because we can't do it on our own. We need Jesus. And if he tells us to do something, we can trust that he's going to give us what we need in order to do it. Let's keep reading. In verse 9, it says, Don't take any money in your belts, no gold or silver or even copper coins. Don't carry a traveler's bag with a change of clothes or sandals or even a walking stick. Don't hesitate to accept hospitality because those who work deserve to be fed. You know, just like you can trust your mom or dad to give you the things that you need, You can trust God to take care of you. It's not that they didn't need gold or silver or copper or a change of clothes or sandals. God knew that they needed those things if they were going to be gone for a while, but he was asking them to trust him to provide those things through other people. You know, it reminds me of a time that I was in a country called Kenya. And when I was there, I was sent specifically to a certain village to tell people about the good news of the gospel. And it was an overnight trip. I had to travel pretty far and we didn't have the ability to pack things with us. So we just went with the clothes on our back. And, you know, when we got there, the people were so excited and eager to hear the message of the gospel that they wanted to do something nice for me and my friends. So they fed me. They gave me water. The women even made me a beautiful dress to wear. And it was a blessing for them to be able to do those things for me. See, that's what Jesus was talking about. When you go into a certain village or a city, he was asking the disciples to just trust him and to believe that the people that were going to be worthy of that message would want to bless them in return. Let's keep reading. In verse 11, it says, Whenever you enter a city or village, search for a worthy person and stay in his home until you leave town. When you enter the home, give it your blessing. If it turns out to be a worthy home, let your blessing stand. If not, take back the blessing. 
See, here we learn that some people are going to be worthy and accept this message and some people aren't. And you know, it's okay. It happened to Jesus and it happened to the disciples. And it's only natural that it's going to happen to us. Sometimes when we share the message of the gospel, the people will accept that message and accept Jesus and accept the peace, the blessing of peace that comes with that message. But sometimes people aren't. And that's probably more about what's going on in their own heart between them and God than it is about you. So if people reject the message that you're trying to share with them, it means that they weren't worthy of the message and you can move on to talk to those who are. See, in verse 14, it says, if any household or town refuses to welcome you or listen to your message, shake its dust from your feet as you leave. See, back in Bible times, they didn't have Nikes and socks like we did. They wore sandals and their feet were bare underneath those sandals. And when they would walk, their roads were really dusty and gross. And so it would be natural for them to get some of the dust from that road on their feet. And what he's saying is, is if people won't listen to you or your message, shake your feet off and get that dust off your feet as you leave, meaning Don't carry that with you. Don't carry the rejection with you because God can still deal with those people. And perhaps it's somebody else that he's called to share the gospel message with him. Your job isn't to worry about that. You can pray for them that they would be receptive to God's word and his love, but you don't worry about them. You move forward and you go to the people that God does have you ready to talk to. See, we talked about the harvest And that means that God has prepared certain people in their heart and their mind and their spirit to accept the gospel message. There's a lot of people that are still at that place. And we can't waste time worrying about the people that reject the message. We have to move forward to tell people that are ready for the message. So as we pray, I want you to think of maybe three people that you can share the gospel message with. And you know what? It's okay if they don't listen. You try. That's what God calls you to do is to try. If they listen, then great. You tell them more. If they don't listen, shake it off and move on. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for my young friends that have a heart to share the good news of the gospel with other people. Lord, help us to recognize that even you and your disciples were rejected sometimes. God, if we are feeling that rejection from people, help us to shake it off and move forward and move ahead to the people that you've called us to speak to. Lord, would you show my young friends in their mind's eye, even right now, the people that you've called them to share the good news with? God, I pray for them to be bold and courageous as they share your faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, friends, we'll talk tomorrow. Hey, friends, thanks for listening to the Hearing Jesus for Kids podcast. If you like today's show, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. That's the number one way you can support this show. If you're wanting to dive a little bit deeper, you can also join our Patreon community to get our family discussion guides, join our private discussion groups, and have access to bonus content and additional resources every month. Hey, I'm praying for you today. Know that you are so loved. 